Hello, everyone, and welcome to the talk by our presenter, Roman Zakharov. Roman is a quality assurance automation engineer at Musician, the world's leading platform to learn and play music. Roman is an experienced software specializing in test automation and manual testing. And his presentation today is titled Automating Audio Tests. Sounds good. Uh, during the talk, if anyone's got any questions, please leave them in the Q&A section and we'll address them at the end. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll hand over to Roman to start and please enjoy the session. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here and tell you about uh, everything about we do uh, while testing musician. So let's um, start this talk by sharing the screen. Um, I'm going to tell you how we simplify manual testing and run UI tests. Let me introduce myself. I'm a quality assurance automation engineer, and I've been testing mobile apps for four years. I'm experienced in social networks and financial industries. Last year, I joined Musician, a well-known company in the digital education industry. What is Musician? Musician is an app that teaches you how to play five musical instruments anytime, anywhere. You can learn guitar, bass, ukulele, piano, and how to sing. Musician is available on all popular platforms, both desktop and mobile ones. We have 20 million monthly active users, and they love our app because we deliver a gamified user experience to keep the learning process engaging. Our app processes incoming audio to evaluate how you play, and it heavily relies on custom digital signal processing and neural networks. Let me show you how it works. When I start musician, the app shows me a huge collection of songs. I've been learning to play the ukulele for some time, as you can see in my learn in path. I'm at the fourth level already, thanks to the collection of curated lessons. Today, I want to practice a specific song, but first thing so first, I need to tune my ukulele. That's good. Just a little bit higher. Okay. I play and tune each string separately, and the app guides me through it. Great. I go back and search for the Shanghai Future City song. That's great. Let's start with a level two song. As you can see, the app tells me which string to play and what fret to hold. I start with the third string on the second fret. As you can see, I can do it all day long. So let me pause here. You saw when I hit the right string, app tells me something like correct or a bit late and, and the note becomes green. If I hit something else or nothing at all, 
I get a red node. That was too easy. Let's try that level 10 song. Oh, that was quick. So it's either I'm a little bit shy when playing to 60 people at the moment, or maybe I need to practice more. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Here's the plan for this talk. First, I will tell you about audio testing in general. Then, I'm going to briefly introduce our approach in automating UI tests of apps made with Unity. Next, I will show you how to test acoustic echo cancellation. Right after that, I will demonstrate how we test both unsynchronized and synchronized audio. Then, we will dive into technical details to see how we set up the audio testing. Finally, we'll go to a conclusion. Let's begin. What is so special about audio testing? The important thing to remember when we test an audio input or output is that it comes with special challenges. Usually, additional hardware to playback and record audio is required. For example, you can use an acoustic guitar with musician. You can also connect an electronic guitar with a special cable. In addition, you can listen to the backing track with wired or wireless headphones or without any headphones at all. Also, you have to keep in mind different test preconditions. There are different background noises we expect the app to ignore. Also, system audio settings make a huge impact. Finally, there are issues that can only be found during end-to-end -end testing. These specific issues include microphone permissions issues, hardware configurations incompatibility, and audio drivers issues. Our rough features bring another layer of challenges. First, playing skills are required to test things properly. Next, the app provides real-time feedback and expects notes and codes to be played at the right time. Finally, multiple supported platforms five instruments to choose and hundreds of songs available in the catalog make regression testing critically cost inefficient. We can test how an application responds to the audio input in multiple ways. Here is the testing pyramid. We can run manual tests represented here with a guitar. Just grab a musical instrument and do it right the problem is, it's not that easy to play multiple instruments all day long, so we need to improve the cost efficiency of manual testing. Another problem comes with audio testing in the UI level of tests. Almost no one simply does it, and there are no ready-to-use solutions for it. Lastly, we can run integration and unit tests relatively easily. In this talk, I will tell you how we simplify manual audio testing and set up automation uh, at the UI test level. Now, we know the audio testing challenges, but there is also something special about testing apps made with Unity. When we test native apps, we use testing frameworks to automate UI tests. It works like this. We send actions to the test target and receive information about UI elements. This scheme shows the data flow between a test target and a test runner. The UI test is a sequence of steps. Tap something, get the UI changes. Swipe something, get the UI changes again, and so on. Our app is made with Unity, a popular game framework. This way, we can significantly speed up a development process because we don't have to create a separate app version for each of the supported platforms. The problem is that the apps made with Unity do not provide UI elements information. To automate UI testing, we edit a remote procedural service based on Google's gRPC. It works over the network, and the app sends the UI elements tree over it. Thanks to it, 
we know what elements are displayed on the screen and where they are. This way, we can utilize a commonly used testing framework, but instead of asking them to interact with an element, we send actions for coordinates. This service is only available for internal builds. Using this gray box technique, we can also add additional test enabling features. We can save logs from the Unity on test failures to debug the issues. Getting the evaluation data when the SON is completed allows us to create very detailed test assertions. We receive information about every single note we played and when we played it. Finally, we can ask the app to instantly open the universal links to speed up test execution. Let's see what we can speed up. First of all, there is a, a universal link to go to the main screen. Using this link, we can go home at any time. This is especially useful during teardown and setup because we save a lot of time by simply going home instead of closing and reopening the app. We can also open any zone, which also saves a few seconds for us. Similarly, we can open any exercise and save about 20 seconds compared to the regular opening. Changing the instrument with a universal link saves some time as well. Opening the settings and a tuner is also possible, but we only save a single tab, so it's not as beneficial. Now we know how to set up UI tests for apps made with Unity by adding a special service, and also how to enhance our assertions by getting evaluation data and cut the corners with universal links. Let's automate the first audio test that verifies an acoustic echo cancellation. What is the acoustic echo? When you are learning with musician, you play notes and chords, and the app listens to you. A backing track helps you to keep the tempo when you are playing and follow the key when you are singing. In case you don't use the headphones, the echo appears, and it leads to false positive evaluation and feedback. We want to app to ignore the echo. What would we need to test this test case? The simplest setup for this test is indeed simple. We need a test runner, for example, this MacBook Pro on the right. We need a test tagger, an iPad on the left. And finally, the connection to send actions from test runner to the test target. Actions are the following. First, we open the zone with a universal link to skip searching and save some time. After that, we play it and wait for the exercise to complete. Finally, we we verify there were only red nodes and no green ones. In the other terms, we verify true negative results existence and false positive results absence. Let's zoom in to the test target and run the test. We can see how the test target opens the zone and grants the microphone permission. It runs the song. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? On this screen, we can verify that the score is zero and we did not collect any of the stars. Also, we use gray box testing techniques to verify the evaluation results. What would be the next step to improve the setup? A good idea would be to run this test on the other devices, as speakers and microphones vary. You may ask, would not multiple test target sounds affect the test results? And the answer is yes, we need to isolate the sound. To do that, we put targets in the wooden box with soundproof foam inside, and then we shut it securely to lock the sound inside. To maximize the stability of the test, we can add another layer of soundproof foam and put it all together to a second wooden box. This Russian door setup helps us a lot. Now we know how to start audio testing by building an automation setup to test acoustic echo cancellation. Let's proceed with testing unsynchronized audio. This time, 
we are going to test Apple's Siri and its Spotlight feature. If you are unfamiliar with Apple's operating systems, hear how it works. I can swipe down to launch Spotlight. Then I type my search request and receive the information sent by Siri. Let's automate this scenario, but this time we will use dictation instead of typing. This is a custom test tool we made to test audio apps. It is made with Juice, one of the most popular audio applications frameworks. It is similar to most audio players. Here we can choose audio to play. We can play back audio um, and control it with these buttons. We can also configure the audio settings in any way we want. Output, channels, sample rate, media output, audio buffer size. The most important feature, however, is an integrated open sound control server. It is listening for commands that allows us test, uh, to control test two during automated test runs. You can see in the information panel that test two receive multiple commands, audio output, audio channel, open audio, offset, and transport. Thanks to the open sound control protocol that is already implemented in Juice, we can automate the test tool with any testing framework. This is how it works with a test code. This is a test case written with Swift that automates the spotlight scenario I mentioned before. First, we initialize the apps. Springboard is a home screen of our device. This line initializes Spotlight. Then we set up a test tool library and prepare to send commands over the internet. As a setup, we route the sound to an external speaker and set the active channels. During the test, we first swipe down and activate the spotlight. Then we tap dictate button. Right after that, we ask test two to open audio and start playing it. The last thing to do is the assertion. We grab the first result cell by its identifier and verify it contains this year's winner name. Let's run the test. Now, there is a speaker in this wooden box. Do you remember how we route the sound to the speaker? Everything goes exactly as we want to. Swipe down, press dictate. Eurovision winner. And verify results assertion. The test passes successfully, thanks to the test tool. Now we learn how to use test tool to automate unsynchronized audio scenarios like Siri voice search. Let's go to the Musician app and automate songs playback. Finally, I can easily deal with the, those level 10 songs, right? I only need to choose a perfect recording in the test tool and play it. Let's see how it works. It fails because musician requires precise timings while you play and does not wait for you, unlike Siri. We can try to set an offset, but it's a flaky solution as we never know how long it would take to tap the app, especially when we run automated tests. We need to synchronize the playback of test tool and musician. Here is another feature of our app. It is compatible with MIDI keyboards. MIDI keyboards do not play any sound, but when connected to a device with an application like Musician, this app sends, we send played notes and this app synthesizes the sound. This way you can learn to play the piano without disturbing anyone. MIDI protocol also supports playback commands like rewind, play and stop. 
Musician can also listen to these commands even for instruments like guitar. And the best thing is we do not need to connect a hardware keyboard. We can send these commands right from the test tool. Let's see what happens to the musician when I click playback buttons. When I click play pause button, the app instantly resumes or pauses the feedback. When I click rewind, the song starts from the beginning. Finally, when I stop the playback in test tool, the playback in the musician also stops. We are able to automate playback commands, so this approach works with both manual and automated testing. Let's see how it works during a song playback scenario on the test target. First, we use a universal link to instantly open the song, give the microphone permission, and then use the test tool to play the song for us. At the end of the test, we can verify the number of green notes and that the average playback offset. Our tests are pretty good synchronized and notes are played within a 50 milliseconds window. I'm so happy I can do this test with test tool because it would take ages for me to play guitar or ukulele like this. In this chapter, I showed you how we utilize the MIDI keyboard's support feature to test synchronized audio. This approach supports both manual and automated testing, and it's implemented in our test tool. Luckily, we did not have to change the app code at all, so the reliability of test results is high. If your app does not support MIDI, you can still achieve the synchronization by using gray box testing techniques. Another advantage of this approach is that it allows us to scale test nicely. All we need are these perfect recordings. Now, I will tell you about setting up the audio testing. Let's start with something we already know, how to set up testing on mobile devices. We need a USB cable to deliver power and actions from the test runner and MIDI command from the test tool. Next, we need a speaker to play the audio with the test tool. When we test audio on desktops, we need to change a few things. First, we can replace the speaker with an audio interface. It will automatically send the audio it receives to a test target. This way, we don't need to keep a desktop in a wooden box. Next thing, we now send actions via the network. But we cannot send MIDI commands over the network. And even if we could, it would bring a time delay. We want to synchronize playback as good as we can. For that, we move the test tool from the runner to the target. As you remember, we still can control test tool over the open sound control protocol, as it's basically an internet protocol. We need to set up a replacement for the audio interface on the test target. Luckily, there are virtual devices that loop the input audio and output audio. In this setup, there is no time delay for MIDI commands. You can see that there is only a network connection between test runner and a desktop target, which means we can easily scale desktop targets. 
To connect mobile devices, we need a USB hub, an audio interface with multiple inputs and outputs is required to connect multiple speakers that play different audio at the same time. That's what we need for mobile devices. And finally, wooden boxes are required to soundproof every mobile test target. Currently, we have eight test targets. There are two different devices running two different operation system versions for every platform. There are two iPhones, two MacBooks, two Windows laptops, and two smartphones running Android. To simplify maintenance, especially during the work from home period, there is a remote connection available for desktop targets and the test runner. Devices are automatically rebooted from time to time. To ensure test stability, we prepared a test target setup checklist for every platform. The automation room is not the only place to run the tests. We can also run them on personal devices. This helps to reproduce issues and investigate them in detail. Now, I want to briefly show you what frameworks we rely on. Earlier, I showed you a test case that works with Siri. I did with this with Apple's testing framework called Exitest. I used Exitest to send actions to the iPad and commands to the test tool. Test tool comes with juice that's already shipped with MIDI support, open sound control protocol, audio playback, and many other things. After that, I use exit test again to verify the result. Of course, if you support Android as well, you might want to use Hapium, the most popular mobile testing framework. Hapium automates both exit test and UI automator for Android. At Usician, we also test desktop targets, and we use the robot framework that comes with Appium support, VNAP driver to automate Windows apps, and Pi Auto GUI to automate macOS apps. At the beginning of the note, I mentioned that we also use Google's gRPC to get the elements in for, cut the corners with universal links, and get detailed evaluation data from the app. The tests are triggered with Jen Jenkins, and the test results are accessible from there. What happens when I start a some playback test with Jenkins? It first triggers the test target. Robot Framework first uses a gRPC to connect to the app servers and opens the zone with a universal link. Then it uses gRPC to get the playback button location and then use a platform-specific testing framework is used to press it. After that, we ask test tool to synchronize the playback and start playing the pre-recorded audio. Next, we use gRPC to get the evaluation data and verify it. Finally, we send the results back to Jenkins. It's time to draw up the conclusion. We managed to run UI tests for apps made of Unity. A custom service also improves our automation by sending the evaluation data and by opening universal links. We additionally simplify manual testing and improved its cost efficiency by creating a custom test tool. Thanks to open sound control protocol, it can also be used to run automated UI tests. We set up the automation room while solving different problems with sound isolation, test scalability, and the maintenance. We also prepared this talk because we sincerely want to share the knowledge about things we learned. If you are interested in audio testing, check out this keynote presented by our teammate Axeli last year. It is available on YouTube, so you can scan this QR code 
to watch it later. During his talk, Axel explained how to test asynchronous audio input and output with the Python programming language. He also showed an example of how we test a tuner. Thank you very much. Now I will happily answer your questions. By the way, you don't have to read the text at the bottom. It's just information about trademarks. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. That was excellent. Um, we do have one question in the Q&A. So if anyone else wants to hop in there and ask more questions, but I might just ask the one that's in there now from Thomas. So he says, would love to test Col Soriso di Inocienza from Bellini's Il Pirata. Could it help singers to learn bel canto properly? Bel canto is a capability of the body, difficult to achieve and even more to test. Does that... Uh... Thank you very much for this question. Yeah. I must admit, I'm not familiar with the singing technique, but with musician, you can learn different uh, singing techniques um, and uh, do some exercise to improve your voice. If we use a uh, perfect recording of the song, we can test it uh, with test tool and also automate it um, using open sound control um, implementation. Okay, great. We've got another question here from Presmislaw. I hope I've said that correctly. Uh, thank you very much. Which part of the testing infrastructure is responsible for checking if a given note or chord is the expected one? And could you tell more about how does it actually work? Okay, I can probably open the scheme again. So, uh huh. Okay, so as you remember, when the song has ended, we get this result screen with stars and score. If we use UI testing approach, we can verify these elements, like there is uh, not a single star present on the screen, for example, if we test eco cancellation, or they are like all stars for us if we do it perfectly. Also, there is a score at the uh, corner, so we can verify this as well. But to make it a little bit better, we use uh, evaluation that's available from Unity. It's uh, more like a JSON, JSON structure of different information pieces, like what, song, what notes and chords were played, at what time, what was the offset, was it too early, and how much milliseconds was the you know, difference between expected results and the actual. We verify that um, a fresh, um, like a certain percentage uh, higher than the threshold were played green if it's positive evaluation test or like um, a certain amount of notes and chords were red if we verify a negative test scenario. Also, we, we verify that the offset between for every single node between um, expected time and the actual time is less than 50 milliseconds. And if it's not, we, uh, of course, uh, log it to the test report. Okay, uh, the next question we have is from Thomas. Could it be more easier to test audio with emulators to avoid external noise? Uh, that is a very good question. It would be easier. It definitely would be easier. Um, but what, what we want to achieve is to, you know, as best approximation to the real world scenario as possible. So for that, we use speakers, we use wooden box to isolate the sound and so on. Yes, for the desktops, we use uh, audio interfaces. Um, these little, um, uh, can you see my points at the moment? Uh, audio testing automation room? Yes, but uh, you mean, do you see my mouse pointer? Uh, no, we can't see the mouse pointer. Okay, so right below... Oh, yes, the, sorry, the we, can, we can see it there. Yes, remote connection for desktop targets and test runner. That's not what I'm showing you, but... Okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, at the middle, we see the test runner. 
this picture and right below that we have audio interfaces they are connected to the desktop so this way we can um, play the audio for these platforms uh, without wooden box and yes it's definitely easier thank you for this question let's move to the other yep so the next one is from pablo he says could you automate the tuning feature of the app to make sure the tuning works correctly okay that's a very nice question um, tuning feature of the app uh, is also an example of unsynchronized audio so we the app uh, patiently waits for the audio input so um, uh, we automate it like this we play a little bit you know lower note and verify that the app says tune up then we play a little bit you know high note that it should be and verify that the app says please go down and finally we play a uh, perfect um, sounds and verify that the app said now the uh, string is tuned we do it for every string and also the test so that detects if you try to tune one string but accidentally play the other um, if you want to see the example you can watch this session by axeli um, and uh, during his talk he show exactly this example thank you pablo okay the next question says thank you for your presentation is this approach efficient for comparing records with words only um okay so i showed an example when we test siri and play the words at the edition we do not test siri and as you remember if we would test siri that would be much easier <laughs> for us to do but we also test nodes and chords um, to do that um, um, test tool works just fine it works exactly as we need i would say the most important part is not only to play the audio when you test it but also verify that the results are uh, false positive false negative whatever you want but they're just as you expect them to be Thank you for this question. Okay, that's excellent. Well, we've covered all the questions there. I suppose the only thing left would be how do people get in touch with you if they wanted to reach out? Okay, great. If you're a little bit too shy to use Q&A <laughs> box to ask questions, you can uh, definitely contact me with LinkedIn. It's available in my Pine profile. So reach out, stay tuned and um, have a good conference. Thank you very much. Thanks, Roman. We'll end the session there. Thank you very much. Thank you.